We've had Dr. Dave Williams on the program many times offering his expertise as a retired astronaut, but he is more than that. He was an ER doctor, CEO, scientist, you name it, he's been it. And so he put all that expertise in a book, in his latest book called Leadership Moments from NASA. I have my copy here and I happened uh, to speak with him over Skype earlier to get a sense of what his latest book is all about. Have a look. Well, the book's about leadership, but more importantly, it's about leadership lessons that apply to all of us. And arguably, my definition of leadership is the ability to influence others. So if you ask yourself the question, will I have an opportunity to influence others at some point in my life? The answer is yes. So we're all on our own leadership journey. And what we try to do is use the examples of leadership in the space program that apply to all of us and lessons that are transferable to our own leadership journey. Hey, you know, that's very interesting that you said that. So right, like right off the hop, I mean, you had me at the first introduction. And I mean, I guess that's what the, the purpose of an introduction is. But uh, one of the things that really actually got to me is when you were talking about or describing, you know, this mission, the Apollo 2 mission, and you had uh, this quote um, about competency, tough and competent in terms of dealing with how a leader is going to run its ship, if you will. Talk about why you decided to choose a kind of that caveat to start things off with, with that uh, scenario and using that terminology, tough and competent. Why does it transcend here in this book and really to what you were saying to leadership um, in all facets of our lives? Well, you know, often as a CEO, I would say uh, senior leadership, executive leadership, not for the faint of heart, tough and competent resonates whether it's in the space program or any other leadership role that uh, individuals are in. The story itself is really quite an important one, and NASA has got many successes, but it's also had some tragedies. In January of 1967, NASA lost the Apollo 1 spacecraft on the launch pad with three astronauts trapped inside. And as a result of that, there was a big inquiry. How did this happen? What can we learn from this? How do we prevent this from uh, taking place again? And Gene Krantz, one of the flight directors at the time, spoke to his team and said, we need to come away from this understanding how we can get better, how we can improve, and how we can prevent this from taking place again. I want all of you to write two words on your blackboard, you know, back in the days of blackboard, tough and confident. We need to make sure that we're bringing our best to these situations and we also need to make sure that we're tough and we're resilient and we can work hard to do the best for the crews and make sure they succeed in space and that i think became part of the nasa culture that resonates with any organization so we've talked about initially you know the, some of the themes in this book and 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 what you're trying to portray and how we can apply it to other industries in our daily lives but in terms of the book itself so i mean the way it's written uh, you can you describe to our viewers what kind of a reading experience they should expect when they pick up this book well, it was a lot of fun writing it. I interviewed many of the current and former senior executives at NASA. The goal was to use specific moments in NASA's history. Many of these moments are familiar to the general public. They're not specific to individuals who know about space. And then to focus on the leaders at the time and their attributes of leadership that allowed them to succeed. What did they do as individuals? You know, if, if you're in a senior executive position and somebody says to you, can we send a crew to the moon? six months from now, that's a big leadership decision. And there's all the technical stuff that goes behind that. But then there's also all the leadership attributes associated with the uh, executive that makes that decision to determine whether or not they're going to be successful. It's so easy to say no. And yet in large organizations that want to make a difference, we need to figure out the art of the possible, how to do these things and do them safely and mitigate the risk as we're going forward exploring space or doing what we do on Earth. Well, to round out our conversation here, I guess if you were to maybe describe in a couple sentences or so, what do you hope your readers get out of uh, uh, picking up this book? Well, we wrote the book with compelling stories. And at the end of every chapter, there's some leadership aphorisms. And then we put together a summary that talks about leadership styles. These are all leadership styles that work. 
and I hope that a reader will get one or more. If they read the book and they come away with just one or two lessons, I think it's worth the price of the book. But if you read the book and you continually go back to the book as you go through your leadership journey, there's a lot of depth and breadth of information that's relevant to any leader. I'm really excited. Uh, the University of Windsor, they're using the leadership book as part of their MBA program. There's a course on leadership, and I'm going to be teaching, uh, I think in two or three weeks, uh, a lesson about this. And we'll be talking about some of the lessons learned in the book uh, that we've uh, included. So I think it's a, just a great opportunity. If you're interested in leadership, if you want to think about how you influence people, pick up a copy of the book, and I hope it'll help.